How are you guys feeling right now? It's towards the end of the day. Are you guys ready for the party? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so, all right. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you guys about Knative's auto scaling capabilities. Um, I'm going to talk about it in the context of request-based scaling, and uh, especially with concurrency and RPS, and kind of discuss what kind of problems you might have and what kind of uh, solutions Knative will provide for you. Um, so first of all, let me first introduce myself. Um, I started contributing to Kubernetes last year in October when I was working for the IBM Product Security Instance Response Team. So I was um, doing Kubernetes on, in my free time, and then I came to KubeCon, and that was the best thing ever. And after that, I kept contributing, and uh, I joined a new team this year. Um, that's IBM's open technology team, where I contribute to Knative right now. Um, so I work for IBM, and I also love running in my free time. Here is the official definition of Knative. I think you guys should be very familiar with Knative at this point, since it's been very talked about. Um, so it builds on top of Kubernetes and Istio, and it really helps developers to interact with just the API and to focus on their code. And this is kind of my own interpretation. Uh, Matt, please correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, I think Knative is like a system that really facilitates configuration of application that's running on top of Kubernetes. And it hides um, complexity from developers so that developers don't have to place as admins. And it, uh, on a more practical level, uh, what developers do is that they provide an application definition um, to, to Knative. And Knative is going to create lower level resources, custom resources for the user. And specifically, these three types of resources. So configuration will be kind of like the current state of your application. Um, as well as revisions, that's kind of like git commits, where you can easily revert back to your previous revisions. And revisions also comes in when you want to kind of have um, route traffic to different versions of your applications. And on top of that, one of the key selling points of Knative is, is auto-scaling capabilities. So uh, in terms of reducing or increasing the number of replicas. And it has both the uh, request-based and also the resource-based auto-scaling. Um, so but this talk is going to mainly focus on the request-based auto-scaling. Both of them are uh, adding and reducing the number of pods. And when we don't receive any request in a certain amount of time, um, where the, the time is what the user specifies, which we're going to talk about later. The uh, Knative is going to reduce the replica count to zero. And today we're going to explore some common problems you might have with your application and kind of how Knative KPA, uh, which is Knative's own class of autoscaler, will solve the problem for you. And the first problem is bursty traffic, AKA um, inconsistent traffic. So this, uh, what I'm gonna talk about, can be applied for both KPA and HPA, but as a disclaimer, I'm just gonna talk about it in the context of KPA with concurrency. Um, so if the traffic is predictable, there are two settings that you can use to um, one can help with code starts, and the other one can kind of um, cap the number of instances that gets created. And both specifies the number of instances. And we're going to see a little example here. Um, so here I have a very simple application. And I'm just going to set the min scale annotation here to 1. And I'm going to send some requests. And then, uh, and then stop, and then see how the application is being scaled down. OK, um, so can you guys see the dashboard here, the small letters? OK, great. So this is uh, the out-of-the-box 
um, Grafana dashboard that comes with your server installation if you follow the guide. Um, so here on the top, we have a graph of revision pod counts, and we can see that there are two lines. Um, there's the actual pod count as well as requested pod count, and you only see the yellow line because the two lines are overlapped. So a few seconds in, we can see that, yeah, one pod is already created, but down here, all the scalar metrics, it, um, it doesn't, like you see for this point, it's zero. That's because we don't have any requests coming in because um, after I create the application, I have like a wait period for, the, for it to come up. And then after a few seconds, you can see that um, the pod count out of scalar metric here has realized that yes, we need to create one instance and we can see that here, the desire pod count, it has uh, it show as one, as well as the actual pod count. And then uh, we can see that after a 60 second duration, as you can note that here is uh, 1210 and then 1211. After that, uh, the applications, the autoscaler's desire pod count has gone back to zero, but the actual pod count of revision is still remains at one and that's because we have specified the uh, min scale. All right, um, yeah, so what do we actually do for unpredictable traffic besides setting min scale? So there's one setting that was introduced called target burst capacity, and like the name suggests, it is specifying the size of burst. And there are four sets of values that you can set here. Negative one means uh, inf infinite, and zero is like no user provided value or a specific size of burst. So here is an example setting. We have min scale set to two, as well as the TBC setting as infinite. So um, what if you also want to set a heart limit on how many requests can reach the pod at any given time, so you can be more deterministic about the number of pods that comes up. And this, that's where container concurrency comes in. And that basically limits the amount of concurrent requests that are allowed into the application, and um, requests that are passed beyond that are being queued. And here are two settings. That, are, um, that Autoscaler uses to help determine what exactly is the target value to set. So um, how are these two settings are set depends on the current value of container concurrency. So if container concurrency is not zero, then this one would be used to help determine the target value versus if container concurrency is zero, uh, that's when the container concurrency target default is gonna help you determine the value. Oh, and by the way, container concurrency, if you set it to zero, it, it means you're not setting a heart limit. So all of these values are actually um, have like Knative's preset value, so it can work out of the box. You don't have to set any of these for it to work out of the box. So. Um, on a more internal level, like how does Knative sample traffic? And it's using the concept of a larger window and a smaller window. The larger window is the standard window, it's the default window that we collect uh, request-based metrics such as concurrency or RPS. And then when we exceed a certain threshold, then we're going to start uh, reacting, try to react quicker on a smaller window, and that's what panic window is. And how that threshold is defined is with the uh, panic threshold percentage. And um, you can, as a user, you can tweak both of these numbers. Um, they can be the stable window here, as well as the panic window percentage was defined as a percentage of the, uh, of the stable window. But keep in mind that the smaller the window that you set the stable window to be, the quicker, like the more jumpy your, uh, the reaction will be in terms of adding and removing the number of pods. So here is an example of how panic window and stable window works. 
So here we have specified using KPA as well as concurrency. And the target, the target value uh, we're setting to six and the target utilization percentage, which is what's the desired level that we want to maintain. And then container concurrency is set to zero. So here, um, I'm using one of the end-to-end uh, -end tests that Knative has already. And what the test does is that it generates requests um, as fast as possible and wait for the application to go from one pod to two pods and then two to three and then eventually three to four. And what we observed is that uh, I'm showing the, uh, the uh, autoscaler pod counts and it has the desired pod count here as well as the concurrency, uh, concurrency value. So we have average concurrency, average panic concurrency, and target concurrency, and the excess burst capacity. And you might ask, what, what is excess burst capacity? So that's not something that we're exposing to the users. It's, um, but I think that will help us to understand this graph, since it's one of the lines. And excess burst capacity is basically how much spare capacity we have minus the configured target burst capacity. And this value is very negative right now because out of the box, it's uh, setting to 200. And here we can see, um, I don't know if you guys can see clearly here, but at first, the, the blue line here is target concurrency. And we can see we start out as average concurrency and average panic concurrency, both below the target concurrency. And then after we're scaling from one to two, then both of them exceeds the target concurrency. And then from three to four, uh, two to three, it also increases. But then we see at this point, and we know that here we're not increasing, uh, we're not doing any more requests. And we can see that here, the, the average panic concurrency has dropped. That's because it's a smaller window. And then we increase again, both the panic concurrency as well as the um, average concurrency when we're scaling from three to four. Okay, and the second problem is that um, how do we scale to zero as fast as we can? Obviously, the cost kind of depends on the individual cloud, um, cloud vendor's pricing model. But in generally, we like to delete resources that we don't use anymore. And um, with Knative's out-of-the-box scale to zero capability, the default amount of time is 90 seconds to scale down to zero. And that's because, um, as we talked about before, we have to first uh, wait for the entire stable window to pass, which is the standard amount of time that we collect metrics. And so after the last request has finished, um, after the last request, then we have to wait for an entire stable window to realize that no more requests are coming in, so we need to scale down at that point. And after that window has passed, we have given the system a grace period, and out of the box is 30 seconds, so it's a bit generous, and as a user, you can tweak both of these settings. But keep in mind that the stable window size, uh, there is an absolute li limit, six seconds, and even with that absolute minimum, it's very small. Because as we can recall, the panic window is only a fraction of the stable window. So with six seconds, uh, the KPA's autoscaler, it collects metrics every two seconds, so we need to be at least twice the amount of that time to have a good uh, sampling, sampling window. And so, so, four, so let's say it's four seconds for the panic sampling window. And so that's like 80% uh, as the panic window percentage, which I think is a bit too high. So even with six seconds, it's still really low, and I don't recommend going down to that level. And with scale to zero grace period, there's also a minimum. And the reason for that minimum is that um, there's a lack of status that we get from things like Istio, so we don't know if Knative's custom load balancer is in the request path or not. And it has to be in the request path when we're scaling to zero. Uh, 
Okay? So now the next problem we have is how to scale your application, like how to actually set up your application to scale with requests per second. And this is a new capability that we added this year. So with um, the definition of RPS we're using here is request per second of reaching the pod. And concurrency is the number of in-flight requests. So setting up uh, RPS auto scaling is actually pretty similar. So you can use the metric here. Obviously specify RPS instead of concurrency here. And the target utilization percentage is used in a very similar fashion as the container concurrency target percentage. And then the, um, the re request per second target default, that's very similar to the container concurrency target default that we have mentioned before. All right, and here are some more resources that, um, that are very helpful if you wanna go deeper into how Knative does auto scaling especially the design docs here. All right, that's it. Any questions? Questions? We are way early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so what considerations uh, do you take into account when trying to decide a stable window and the scale down to zero window? Is it purely um, because you need the time to make sure the sample of uh, resource utilization is accurate enough or there are some other considerations that, um, why can, uh, in another word, why can I um, scale down to zero as fast as possible? I see. Um, because I've actually never used like Knative in a large application in reality, so I don't think I will be the best person to answer this question. But I think um, if you, so is your goal trying to scale down as fast as you can? Yeah, sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Could you sorry, repeat? Uh, I mean, what I'm trying to say is uh, the, the, the time you scale up and down directly ties to your infrastructure costs, right? The faster you can scale down, the cheaper it is. Mm -hmm. So um, then the question is, why can't you push it further, say, as fast as possible? I guess that's the question. Mm -hmm. I think there's a difference between scaling down and scaling down to zero. So the 90 seconds is for scaling down to zero out of the box. Uh, Matt, do you have something to say? See, you do want to talk. <laughs> so uh, there's a knob for it. Uh, I think that in practice, we actually see people uh, make it larger, not smaller. Um, you can make it smaller. Um, uh, I think Tara mentioned you can basically drop it down to six seconds or so, um, but you end up basically making scaling decisions over a, a much smaller time frame uh, of metrics. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, um, by making it larger, you effectively reduce the frequency with which you scale down to zero and see, see cold starts. Does that make sense? And th there's other knobs too, to, um, uh, effectively uh, control how over-provisioned you are when not scaled to zero so that you can avoid cold starts as well um, that factor into resource utilization. And it, ultimately, it's all about balancing uh, cold starts versus you know, uh, true zero resource utilization. Safe, safe for the recording. <laughs> no. Uh, like so, so solely scaling down to zero is trying to avoid that cold start penalty. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Over here, more Googles. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm so, two of the 
Two of the reasons mentioned here um, for the scale down are, or for the, the delay on the scale down, is that it takes a few seconds from when Knative says scale down until all the HTTP routing layer has actually finished receiving that status. And right now, a number of the different routing layers are eventually consistent and don't tell you when they finished. So um, that delay is to account for the time it takes between telling them, please do this thing, and them having finished it. Um, the second item is that this is actually a really interesting area for research, and um, there's a bunch of cool ideas about how to reduce startup time, and it's not just hot starts and cold starts, but there's actually a hierarchy. Um, anything from, I have to go and fetch and unpack six Docker layers in order to get this container started, to, hey, that's in my page cache, but the process hasn't been started recently, so I'm just going to need to start a new process. Um, and if you are interested, I think that this would be a fascinating area um, for either academic or commercial research. I think you're actually worse than the stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> with proper setting setup, your scale to zero time is actually six seconds exactly. Uh, but you're losing, yeah, a larger window, you're getting very short decision making. And the scale down itself happens every two seconds. It's only to zero that it takes much longer time. I know you could, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Excluding these four right here, any other questions? <laughs> All right, you put us ahead of schedule, thank you. Yay. <laughs>